There's a lot of focus on digitization, but we do have an analog world, we do have physical objects. And so the great thing about Internet of Things, it actually connects those physical objects to the digital world. So it's a massive, massive opportunity for essentially the future of, of how we work, play and get educated. Uh, for DBS Bank, we really see this as, as two great values. One is, it's a new way to engage with clients. The fact that a lot of our customers are now wearing internet-connected watches, for example, means we can reach out to them and give them banking services and products through that device. Secondly, the way we understand customers can be different as well. We can get a lot more information, obviously with their permission, about what they do in their day-to-day -day life to be more effective so we can offer them friction-free and uh, highly contextualized financial products. We launched a project last year called Smart Buddy. What we wanted to do was a number of things. Uh, primarily was to help children be more healthy and also be educated on managing their finance. So we released something called Smart Buddy. And in 17 schools in Singapore, we gave them IoT watches which they used to pay for their school meals. But on there as well, it would inform the parents on what the children were eating and also give analysis on their fitness. There was fitness trackers and trainers on there as well. So not only do we educate kids on, on better money management, we're helping the parents you know, manage what their children are eating at school. And also then we're removing cash out of the economy and making Singapore a smarter nation. Certainly the industry needs to uh, think about that they've got new attack surfaces with the, you know, thousands of different variations of IoT devices each are built to different standards and have different data schemas. But essentially it goes back to the core tenant of security. So how are you collecting the data? How are you storing the data? How are you transporting the data? And are you using standard cybersecurity techniques to do that? Um, at the moment there are very, um, very, very different kind of data schemas, transportation methods that are happening. And really those need to be standardized and standardization is obviously a great defense against cybersecurity. But we've got to think, yeah, what data is being collected and then what uh, focus do we need to put on protecting that? And so if the data is just, you know, my location data while I'm cycling, okay, that's sen slightly sensitive data. Um, but if it's data sent on uh, detailed on my, my current health, obviously that's a whole level of uh, a whole different level of, of how we manage that. But I think with anything, the realization your attack service as a business is growing because you have these new channels, if you will, and then dealing with it, with it as you would with any kind of new channel and any um, new attack service in your organization. We take data privacy incredibly seriously. For us, those ones and zeros in our database are not just financial records. They're people's lives, yeah. They're their kids' college fund. They're their health insurance. You know, they're their home. Because of that, we treat that very seriously. We have to. We can't act like a tech company with other people's information. And so every piece of data has a data protection policy. We have a data protection officer at the bank. We have an incredibly strong um, cyber security team. We have a chief security officer to manage that. And then we have lots of partnerships um, across um, various government bodies and industries to make sure we're at the very forefront of how we manage and protect our clients' data. So at DBS we partnered with the uh, Singapore research group ASTAR and A squared R as part of that and what we did we looked at the um, sensors inside our ATM fleet. Now ATMs they at certain points obviously they, we know that they occasionally run out of money that's normal because money goes in uh, and money comes out. What also happens is parts of an ATM fail. They are mechanical and electronic devices. We um, used machine learning and artificial intelligence to analyze a lot of that data that we never looked at before. And what we found is we can predict with a high level of accuracy what part of an ATM and when it's going to fail. And so those sensors give us that insight and we can actually go and fix that part of the ATM before it fails, which means our customers don't experience any downtime. I think what we're going to see is hopefully that we see more standardization, uh, both in devices and transmission protocols. We're going to see a lot more growth of the convergence of IT, artificial intelligence and also blockchain um, for those devices. And we're going to see interesting new use cases. 
Essentially, IoT for me is it turns a, a black box into a white box or transparent box. And so for scenarios which was a black box before, we really can't see inside that thing. The, the real promise of IoT is now we can. We can get really, really intricate. And of course, that insight is going to drive efficiency, which essentially will reduce cost for many, many things that we consume today.